and welcome back to Crooks in a Caravan. This is our third instalment of our West Coast road trip. Um, we are in Carnarvon, so we're now heading our way back south. Um, we've got one night here, um, just to break up the journey, and we've never stopped in Carnarvon before, so we thought we'd give it a look. We're actually on the old tramway uh, footbridge, it's called now. It used to be, uh, a tramway obviously um, so we'll show you around here and then we're heading down to Shark Bay uh, tomorrow for three nights and we're gonna hopefully explore Big Lagoon and Little Lagoon and some of the sites around Shark Bay so we'll see you on the road so we are in Carnarvon and we are doing the uh, fruit loop um, much to Mark's disgust he's not a big fan of fruit but um, anyway this is something to catch on video. This is Mark eating a banana in Carnarvon. So I've just bought fresh bananas from the um, Bombats stall stand, little kiosk, and some banana jam. So we're gonna try banana jam. And we are now heading back out to drive this little fruit loop loop. Pretty sure that our bananas came from one of these trees. And yeah. these... trees over that side are lined all the way along the road to produce the bananas off Canava. There you go. I think this is what Mandy was trying to say before in the car. But these are actually the bananas in big bunches hanging on the tree. <laughs> continuing on our fruit loop and we've now got to um, what is known as the cactus garden um, and as you can see there's quite a lot of different varieties of cactus planted here um, apparently it just started some man like planting cactuses and it's now become a bit of a tourist attraction to see the cactus <laughs> seen pictures on Instagram of the cactus garden and it always looks a lot better than I think it is some big cacti and there's also a very smelly dead ibis on the road just outside anyway we've made a small donation <laughs> Some reason we always end up next to the washing lines. We were next to the washing lines in Exmouth. This has become our go-to game in the evenings whilst we've been away. It's Bananagrams. If you've not played it, it's quite good fun. Um, it's a bit like Scrabble, but not as competitive. We also bought a Monopoly card game, but we didn't like um, charging each other for houses and stuff from being competitive. So we like this because it's a bit more friendly. So, but it's been good fun. We are at Hamlin Pool and just looking at the stroma lights. Um, the boardwalk out to them was damaged in the cyclone um, last year, so you can't get all the way out. Um, but there's a little volunteer guy who's just given us a little bit of information, and we're just going to have a little look around Hamlin Pool, have some lunch before heading on to Denham. Uh, this is the telegraph station at Hamlin Pool, which is all for the caravan park. There's also a tea room and souvenir shop. I think we're going to walk out to the quarry. Um, lots of information boards. I think it's run by the Department of Parks and Wildlife. That volunteer had a shirt on saying Department of Parks and Wildlife. So this is the Shell Quarry. Um, so basically they used big saws. We saw a picture of and cut out the blocks here. And then they were transported to Denham and there's two buildings there that are made out of the shell blocks. I think one's a restaurant and the other's a church. They're transported by camel, he said. It took three days. And they're made up of millions of tiny little shells, apparently very light and very strong. It's been quite the undertaking, really.
goes around all over that side as well. Strange little place. I guess the major draw was the Stromalites and the boardwalk, but as we've showed you, the boardwalk was destroyed in Cyclone Saroja. It does say they're going to rebuild it though. It says By this 2022, year. <laughs> so uh, yeah. maybe a bit behind. Still on our way into Denham and we have stopped at the famous Shell Beach and yeah there's billions upon billions of tiny little shells. Um, don't know what else to say about it. It's very beautiful. The ocean's very calm and flat. Uh, good parking here for caravans if you want to stop. There's massive caravan bays. We have come to Ocean Park. Um, we're going to grab a bit of brekkie um, and look at the view and then maybe go through the aquarium. View from the cafe area of Ocean Park um, and the outdoor cafe seating. It's an amazing view and we can see big schools of fish making really strange patterns in the water. It's pretty cool to watch. Ocean Park is amazing, really good, but um, we didn't really do much video because it's a little bit dark. We've come out to Eagle Bluff. There's a really good boardwalk here overlooking the cliffs and the idea is you spot wildlife. We've seen a couple of rays but no sharks or dugongs or anything. Um, we had just come from Ocean Park uh, which is the aquarium. They've got a really good cafe there. We had breakfast then we went around the aquarium. Highly recommend it. The uh, guides were really knowledgeable and it was really interesting and kind of got a new respect for fish really. <laughs> They learn. They learn and they remember. So don't believe all you hear about fish. We have come to Denham's famous thong shack. Now for our viewers in the UK, and I know we have a couple, um, this it probably means something completely different to you <laughs> than it does to us. So don't get too excited, but we'll show you the famous thong shack now. Yeah, this is it. These are the thongs. Nothing to do with underwear, more to do with footwear. We are now at Little Lagoon. Um, so just a couple of k's outside of Denham. Mark's calling his feet off. Um, it's, warm as. it's warm as. And as you can see, um, it's a nice little lagoon. You can actually um, drive part way around it, which we have done and you come to these um, little picnic areas um, which have actually got barbecues there as well so we're gonna have a spot of lunch here um, a little paddle and then we're gonna go and try and find little lagoon creek which apparently you can float down a little way so we'll show you that shortly <music> We 
are now at Little Lagoon Creek, um, which feeds into Little Lagoon. Um, Chasing Horizons tipped us off about this place and um, it's well worth a visit. They actually floated down here with noodles, I think. Um, it's flowing really quite quickly today um, and all the signs warn you about stonefish. And having just heard the stories of stonefish at um, Ocean Park, we're not game because apparently you have to do the shuffle so that you detect them um, and if they bite you, sting you, uh, it's five times worse than childbirth Yeah. Um, and lasts for two to three days. So we're going to give that a miss. We are in Shark Bay and exploring the region around here. Um, just thought I'd give you a quick look at where we're staying. So we were hoping to go to Big Lagoon um, but Mandy's had some work things come up so um, We've stayed in the car caravan park in town and we'll be doing day trips from here. Um, so we are at the Shark Bay Caravan Park. Um, you can see the van in the car behind me. Here's all this little individual fence area sites. And it's all this hard packed ground. Um, it does have a pool here. I'll go and show you that in a moment. Um, but I'll just head back over to the van, which is just here. Turn you around. We've got a little walkway down there. You can't see probably because of the sun. Um, just having my morning coffee. And connected to the posts uh, on the fence, a couple of hooks. The ground here is very hard. It's this kind of sandy, shelly stuff. You can drill pegs into it, but uh, they conveniently put these hooks in there. We should have attached the straps to the awning. This is the camp kitchen. It is a really well set up space, a huge shed, you know, with all the things you'd expect and some things you wouldn't like a dartboard. But if you don't have any of your own uh, facilities, this is brilliant. A uh, decent sized pool area with some seating and there's a little barbecue area just through there as well. Um, water's probably a little bit fresh for us at this time of year and uh, pool's always full of kids. It's only eight o'clock in the morning so nobody's in there yet but it's a decent pool. So these are the ablution blocks and uh, washing lines obviously and we're just heading around now into the laundry. They also have individual shower and toilet cubicles here. These always seem to be getting cleaned at 7 o'clock in the morning then. Morning! So we are still in Shark Bay um, and we have come into Francois Perron National Park today. Um, so um, we're going to go out to Big Lagoon first of all and have a look there. Um, that was where we actually really wanted to camp. At, uh, we'll have a look at it for another time. Uh, Mark's just letting the tyres down, do a bit of four-wheel driving. They do recommend you drop your tyres to 20 psi, so we're doing that. Um, and there is some um, air stations um, as you come out, so that you can actually air them back up, which is, I uh, guess, easier than getting your compressor out as long as there's a big, as long as there's not a big queue. So we'll show you around. Some beautiful blue sky and some very red. Uh, sand. This is Big Lagoon. Like Little Lagoon, but bigger. There you go, that's my technical geological uh, explanation. Um, was going to put the drone up because the colours are beautiful in the water, the red sand. I've left it in the caravan. A bit annoyed with myself. Can't be bothered to go back and get it and drive back out. An excuse to come out again. Uh, we did have a look at Big Lagoon Campground because we were originally thinking of staying there. There were a couple of sites and I think next time we come up we'll definitely, definitely do it. Yeah. And we'll bring the drone. I was even going to sit in a campsite that's free and send Mark back to get the van for one night, but... Um. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just show you the view.
colours of Australia are spectacular. So this is Kraska's tank. Um, uh, apparently back in the day a guy who only had one leg used to ride his horse 70 kilometers to buy pearls and take mail to the pearlers. Uh, one day he was coming back, his horse got frightened, he fell off his horse, he broke his only good leg and he crawled to his only chance of survival which was towards this tank um, which collected water in it. It's got like a corrugated roof and a little channel that goes into here but he never made it and died. Kraska's tank. This is now Gregory's. So we're gradually wending our way around the coast and just admiring the beautiful landscapes. One of the things you probably haven't seen us doing this holiday is our five kilometer walks every morning. Um, I don't think we've managed it any morning in fact, So, but we are just doing one and a half kilometers each way from Cape Peron to, to Skipjack. Skipjack Point, something like that. Which is over there. And we're wearing very suitable walking shoes. And the snake bite kit is in the caravan. We've nearly made it to the lookout at Skipjack Point, uh, which is the halfway point in our walk. Only a couple of minor injuries. I've had a stick stab me between my toes and then we ran into a patch of bindies. Um, sorry, I just looked at something in the ocean. I think it's a bird. <laughs> Uh, we'll show you people back in the UK what bindies are on the way back because they'll probably just stick into the bottom of our thongs. So these are bindies. They are very spiky and very hard and they can even puncture your thongs uh, but they hurt like hell when they get in your feet. This is the old shearing shed at the Perrin Estate, which is part of the National Park. Uh, we were going to go in the uh, hot tubs, but they were a bit full of other people's bodies, so we're not. Change with sheep. <laughs> Yeah. Again, it's just sort of like the hot weather, the dust, no air conditioning, yeah. probably no hot water. It's a fairly tough life. Back breaking it to be as well. This. Mm. So it's our last night on the road. We are at Dongara Oval. This is just an overnight stop. I think it's $10. A night and you can only do one night. Um, we've been sorting out the van, uh, drying the mat, I'll drop some footage in of Mandy doing that, sorting it out. I've just cut my hair, uh, so I'm looking young and handsome again and tomorrow we'll be home. Last night in Denham uh, there were fine works in the town, there was a fishing festival and it was the final day of that, um, so we will put up some footage of that at the end. This isn't a bad little spot, there are a few vans here, um, there is a dump point so I can get the nasty done in the morning before we finally head home. Um, and we're going to the pub for dinner, who wants to cook eh? And uh, just don't forget to like, subscribe and we'll catch you on the road again soon. Thanks guys. Yeah.